Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. I'm gonna photograph a nebula in outer space, and I'm gonna bring you along with me for the entire imaging process, step by step throughout the entire day and night. So join us in today's episode of What the F I'll start out the day by checking Astrospheric on my phone to see if it's gonna be clear outside. If the top line is a dark blue, that means it's gonna be relatively clear. If the middle line is dark blue, that's good. But if it's kind of a whitish color, that means we're gonna have high clouds, haze, humidity, or smoke. And as we can see, this looks like it's gonna be a good night to shoot. It's gonna be a good night to shoot. That's what I just said. Right. While having breakfast, I'm gonna to need to make a few phone calls to make sure that my schedule for the day and night are completely cleared. Hi, Barbara. Listen, my neighbor's mother's brother's cousin's chiropractor is on fire and I have to go to Milwaukee, so I will not be making it into work today. I'm very sorry. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll spend the next few hours looking on Telescopius and Stellarium on my computer to try to plan out what I'm actually gonna be shooting that night. Let's see what's in the sky tonight. Let's go ahead and fast forward to about midnight. So as you probably saw, I'm going to be shooting the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula tonight. I'll be using my Astro Modified Canon T5i, otherwise known as a 700D, and a Radian 61 telescope with a focal length of 275 millimeters. I've also got a ZWO guide scope and guide camera mounted on top for auto guiding. Normally I would just use a regular light pollution filter like the Optolong L Pro or no filter at all but the moon's gonna be out tonight, so I've decided to use the Optolong L Enhance filter. It's a dual narrow band filter that's going to filter out most of the light except hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. Now it's probably gonna filter out some of the background colors, some of the brown dusty colors from the Milky Way, but I think it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a good trade-off. I'd rather be able to shoot and not have the moon wash out my images than have that cool brown color in the background. I'll be using the EQ6R Pro mount to find and track my target throughout the night so I can take very long exposures. I'll be using the ASI Air to control all of my equipment. This is like a little mini computer with USB ports that I can plug everything right into. And to supply electricity to all my devices, I'm gonna be using this Pegasus Pocket Power Box Micro, and it's gonna be plugged into a Gold Zero Yeti 400 battery. Now let me quickly show you how I wire everything up. I'll start by plugging the power cable into my mount. I'll then plug the other end into a 12 volt outlet on the Pegasus Pocket Power Box. Next, I'll add a dummy battery to the battery port of my Canon camera. I'll plug the other end into the eight volt DSLR output on the Pegasus power box. I'll add dew heater bands to my guide scope and telescope because down here in Mississippi, it gets so humid. This is what it looks like after being outside for only an hour and no, it did not rain. This is just what it looks like. I'll plug the dew heaters into the RCA dew heater ports on the Pegasus power box. Now I'll take a power cable and plug it into another one of the 12 volt outlets on the power box and the other end into the input on the ASI Air. I'll add a thumb drive to the ASI Air to save my files on. Now I'll plug a USB cable into my mount and the other end into an open USB port on the ASI Air. I'll do the same with the camera, USB out of the camera and into a USB port on the ASI Air. And the same thing with the guide scope. USB from guide scope to an open USB port on the ASI Air. Now that everything's wired up and looks like spaghetti, I'm gonna plug the Pegasus power box into the Yeti 400 battery, and now we have power to everything. Well, the Milky Way and the Lagoon Nebula are gonna be right back there, but unfortunately, so is all that crap as well. 
So we're gonna load everything up in the car and we're gonna go find a place to shoot. It's gonna be an adventure. After I reach the field across the street, I'm gonna set up my tripod facing north. I'm gonna take a bubble level and make absolutely sure that my tripod is completely level. This can affect performance. Now I'm gonna add the mount itself to the tripod. The mount is actually about 30 pounds. Make sure it's screwed on good and tight. Now I'll extend my counterweight rod. Go ahead and add the counterweight. And it's time to add the camera and the telescope. I always like to set up a table to keep my battery and other accessories on. At this point, it's time to wire everything up. After everything's wired, I like to check my balance in both right ascension and declination. And today, it looks like it was right, right off the bat. This is also a good time to check for snags in any of my cables. Time to plug in and get started. We're gonna switch over to the tablet now. We just wanna make sure that all our equipment is connected and then we'll hit enter. This is the home screen and the first thing I'm gonna do is tap the camera icon at the top and make sure my camera's ISO is set to 800. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the bottom right and make sure my exposure time is set to three seconds. I'd like a three second exposure. Now I'm gonna to go to my mount controls and just make sure that the tracking is turned on. At this point, I'm just gonna hit the shutter button and the camera is gonna take a three second test shot so I can test to see if my stars are anywhere near in focus. All right, the stars are pretty much in focus, so I'm gonna go and change preview mode to PA for polar align. Now that we're in polar align mode, I'm gonna hit the play button and it'll take a three second test shot and plate solve it, which means it's gonna find where it's looking at in the sky. Now I'm gonna hit the next button and it's gonna rotate my mount and telescope 60 degrees, take another test shot and plate solve it again. Once it's done, you hit let's go. And in the top right, it's gonna show a series of numbers telling me how far off I am on my polar alignment. It'll tell me if I need to move my mount up, down, left, or right. And I'm trying to get the numbers as close to zero as possible. If I wanna rotate my mount right, I move the azimuth knobs away from me simultaneously. If I wanna move it left, I rotate the azimuth knobs towards me simultaneously. If I want my mount to go up or down, I'll use the crank on the back clockwise to go up, counterclockwise to go down. I'll keep adjusting my mount and hitting the refresh button at the bottom until I get the numbers at the top right as close to zero as possible and the frowny face turns into a smiling face. There we go. I think that's a pretty good polar alignment. Now we can hit finish down at the bottom. I'm gonna go back over to the right and change PA back to preview. Now on the search bar on our mount controller, I'm gonna tap that and we're gonna look for Ontaries, the star to focus on. We could go to the search bar at the top and type it in, but for me, it's already in my recent searches. I'm gonna tap the graph on Ontaries and hit the go to button down at the bottom right. 
the Mountain Telescope will now slew over to the red giant star Antares. Now I'll use this Betanoff mask to get perfect focus. I'll slip it over to the front of my telescope, and then I'll go ahead and take a three second test shot. If we zoom in, we can see diffraction spikes are now around the star. We're looking for an X with a straight line directly through the middle. If the X is not going directly through the middle, it's not in focus. But here, I've got it in focus, so we are ready to take the Betanoff mask and move on. We'll go back to the search box and our mount controller, and we can look through tonight's best and see if we can find the target we want to shoot. We don't see it in there. We can always go to the top, to the search bar, and type in M8. That's the Lagoon Nebula. That's the catalog name that we are looking for. I can tap on that graph by the Lagoon Nebula, and Go To comes up in the bottom right. I can tap that and go straight to it. Alternatively, if I've shot this before and want to collect more data on it, I can come to this flash drive icon at the top, and I can go to Image Management and find an old light frame that I might have stored on my ASI Air. Here's a light frame of the Lagoon Nebula I took the other night. I can just tap the screen and hit go to, and it will point my telescope right where it was pointing the other night. All right, now I've got everything centered up and framed up just how I like it. It's time to start auto guiding. I'm gonna tap the auto guide icon in the top left corner up here. Now I'll click this top icon and go ahead and clear any calibration data I've had in the past. Now we're gonna hit the refresh button to start the guide camera and the target button to go ahead and start calibrating and auto guiding. It has selected multiple stars to use as guide points. This will take about five minutes to complete. Once it's completed, a guide graph will come up at the bottom and it'll show me how well my guiding is doing. I want to try to keep the RA and deck numbers over here on the right below zero if I can. We'll go over here and click this button at the top left to close out of auto guiding. Right here, my screen recorder froze, so I had to reshoot this little bit. So we're going to go over here to preview mode and change it to auto run and then click the three lines right here. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of anything I might have done previously, so we have a screen just like this. I will tap the plus icon. I'm gonna choose light frames, change the exposure time to 180 seconds, and tell it to repeat 60 times, and hit OK. In the left, I'll give my target a name. We'll call it Lagoon. I'll turn my Meridian flip on and come down to the bottom and tell it to go to the home position after I'm done shooting. I'll go ahead and hit the white circle in the right and this is what a 180 second frame looks like. Now it's time to go in and rest for the next three hours. It's not safe out there. It's almost four o'clock in the morning. It's time to go shoot calibration frames. Now that we're done with our light frames, I wanna make sure tracking is off and our speed is turned to the highest number it can go. I'll use those up, down, left, right buttons to make sure that my mount is pointed straight up, just like this. We're now gonna take flat frames that remove vignetting and any dust that might be on my equipment. I'll start by double wrapping a white pillowcase around my telescope lens. Secure it tightly with a rubber band so there's not any creases. Now I'm going to take a illuminated white tracer pad. You can also use a white screen on a tablet and set that right here on top. We'll change back over to auto run on the tablet. Let's go ahead and clear out the light frames. Now let's hit the add button and switch to flat, leave exposure time at auto, 
and repeat 30 times. Let's hit OK. Once again, the screen recorder froze, but I just went and hit that circle on the right where you see the pause button and it started my flat frames. And this is kind of what a flat frame looks like. It's auto generating the proper exposure time for a flat frame. When the flats are done, we're gonna take darks and bias. We'll start by replacing the lens cap, putting that back on the telescope. Now we'll go back into our auto run menu once again and clear out the flats progress we had before. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll go ahead and hit the plus button and select dark. Exposure times will be 180 seconds, the exact same as our lights, that's very important. And we're gonna go ahead and choose 30 for repeat. We'll take 30 dark frames and hit okay. We're gonna tap the plus button again and now hit bias and we'll use the lowest number possible. For here it's 0.001 and for repeat, we're gonna do 100 of those since the exposures are so short. The darks are gonna be used to remove noise from my light frames in stacking, and the bias are gonna be used to remove noise from my flats in stacking. We're gonna go ahead and hit that circle button on the right, and that's it, we're done, we're going to bed. <sighs> well, I've got a lot of data to process. Hi, Barbara. Listen, uh, I'm not going to be able to come into work again today. Oh. You mean fired. Okay, I understand. Well, we'll be seeing you around. If you'd like to support this channel, please leave me a like or a super like. Both of those helps get this channel going. The processing part of this image is going to have to be its own separate video because it's going to take a long time to do and explain. So if you want to see more of that, if you want to see more Milky Way photography, deep sky photography, travel astrophotography, any of that stuff, please subscribe and I can't wait to show you more videos. For now, I think I'm just going to go back to bed. So as always, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night.